Welcome back. You are still watching Bold Faces. It's instructive to note that the Great Britain of today became so great because of the effective running of their task system. And of course, the commitment of the people in paying their taxes. Let's do the right thing by paying our taxes for a better society. It's our responsibility. The Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, is Nigeria's federal revenue agency with a mandate to assess, collect and account for taxes and levies accruable to the Federation. Established as part of a colonial tax organization under the Inland Revenue Department of Anglophone West Africa, covering Nigeria, Ghana, Sierra Leone and the Gambia. It went through several restructuring and reorganizations before and after Nigeria's independence until 1993, when it became FIRS. My name is Tunde Fowler. I be to announce my name. My name is Faramade Ogunsara. My name is Anita Erine. I'm an assistant director in the Enforcement Directorate. And I'm the director heading the uh, efficiency unit, the office of the chairman. I'm the special advisor to the executive chairman. I also oversee the domestic staff group of the service. My name is Adebowale Shonakon. I'm the SAICT to the chief executive of FIRS. For those that evade tax, I will say to them that um, we cannot get the Nigerian of our dream if we continue to fail to pay our taxes. Um, in all those countries that we run into for our holidays and for our businesses, those countries are developed to the level they are because the citizens pay their taxes. Um, in some climb, the biggest offense you can probably commit is not to pay your taxes. And people can go to jail and there's no respect of person. Um, you should look beyond yourself. Realize that your non-payment of taxes is affecting somebody, somebody who may be close to you. And what we're looking for is just a token, just a little bit of your profit. So, um, join the family, contribute to the Commonwealth. So next time you decide on where you want to spend your holiday, you choose home. our taxes, we find out that it benefits all of us. The government needs money to function, they need money to provide infrastructure, money is needed to provide health care, education, and so much more. I'll advise all citizens to pay their taxes and we have an example in Lagos because of the fact that they were able to collect a lot of tax revenue, which uh, was many times over what they were collecting from the center, Lagos has excelled. And I think that Nigeria as a whole will excel when we pay our taxes. Well, it depends on the, the type of taxes that you are paying. Uh, for VAT, for instance, we know that it's a 5% flat rate for all supplies of, and, um, of goods and services. So for every consumption that is not exempted from VAT, you pay 5%. For company income tax, it's 30%. But again, that is 30% of the profit. That is after you have been allowed to deduct all expenses that are reasonably, wholly, exclusively, I mean, incurred for the purpose of that business. After the deduction of all that, then you come to your profit, and that profit is what is charged to tax at the rate of 30%. Capital gain tax for instance is 10%. So it depends on what tax you are liable to pay at any point in time. There are various tax rates which are applicable to various transactions at any point in time. 
The days of evading taxation are numbered. The awareness is out there. The technology and the solutions and the, the institutions are also aware and are collaborating. And with this collaboration, it will be more and more difficult to evade or to avoid taxation. So uh, my advice would be to comply, voluntary comply, to engage, to com communicate. And um, it's, it's, not, it's not a wise practice to avoid tax. It pays to pay your tax. Paying of tax is very important. It is the only sure source of revenue that any government has. So my advice to all taxpayers, please pay your tax. We need to take payment of taxation very seriously because that is the only sustainable form of revenue that we can get to develop our economy. Uh, there are two sides to it as well. Uh, then our leader also, who when we pay these taxes, also have an obligation, a responsibility to ensure that those taxes are judiciously used and they are used for the development of the mankind and the welfare of the people. But I will say to everybody, pay your taxes because that is the right thing to do. We encounter a couple of challenges. We're not sometimes able to locate companies if, if we want to employ the mode of enforcement of sealing the company's premises. And then um, we have portfolio companies that do business and then disappear. They owe taxes, they're not fulfilling their co uh, constitutional obligations, and we're not able to locate them. Then we also have companies that use um, residential premises as their addresses, we get there. If we want to use the mode of sealing a company's premises, we're not able to seal because it's a residential premise. And then we have those that falsify records, they file with the Federal Land Revenue Service at the tax offices. So these are challenges that we face. Our core business is taxation. So I could say that one of the initial challenges would be you know, aligning IT with taxation and the understanding of what value ICT has. Typically, the notion for ICT is that it's driven as a cost center. But now, I think with the nation and with the way the nature of things is, you can't do anything without the use of technology. So now we're seeing it as a business driver. And I think now that is what we're striving towards is to continue to enhance that alignment. And initially, that, that's one of the challenges that faces anywhere, is, is that the understanding of IT and driving that understanding. And that's part of what my mandate is, to help drive that understanding through the, the um, organization. However, we also devised strategies of tackling those challenges. And basically, we, uh, we liaise with the Corporate Affairs Commission. We liaise with the uh, Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit, the NFIU. We liaise with the banks. Of course, our act provides that we can appoint someone as uh, a taxpayer's agent to use the uh, monies in the to use the monies with the tax with the agents that we uh, we appoint to liquidate the tax debt. And then um, we also liaise with um, security agencies. So when these companies disappear, we have means of tracking them. And then when we appoint the agent, of course, we use the banks, like I said earlier on, and we place a lien on the company's account. So usually with this, we're able to locate those companies. So these are the constraints that we face and how we're tackling the challenges. Well, there are challenges, yes, because people are used to doing some things in a particular way. And the, what we try to do is to make sure that we have changes. Challenges in changing people, and that has uh, been overcome mostly. We have looked at our expenditure and we have decided that we can get things done better. We looked at, uh, for instance, our offices and we found that we can actually have people managing our offices to give more free time to our staff to go after revenue of the state. So we introduced what we call total facility managers in all our offices to make sure that uh, office repairs and maintenance are done by those staff. We looked at our supply of uh, diesel, and we farmed it out to some companies to ensure that all our offices have enough 
little to power them and there are no breakdowns. I guess the biggest of the challenge we've had uh, is that of human one. Um, it's not easy for people to accept changes everywhere in the world. It's not only limited to Nigeria. Uh, the chairman came with a vision and that vision was again, like I said at the beginning, to transform the way revenue administration is being done. He came up with a lot of initiatives and a lot of modernization program. This was not very easy for staff, existing staff before, to accept. It took us time. We had to try to get their buying in, to convince them, to ensure that, look, we are working together towards a common goal, but we cannot continue to do things the same old way and expect a different result. So ultimately, we got the buying in of staff, and that was the greatest challenge, but I can say that is over now. We're all working together, doing a common thing and having a common purpose. But that was, I think, our greatest challenge. The only thing they say that's constant in life is change. But when you change certain things, people who are used to doing things a certain way, generally believe that that is the best approach to do things. So I think one of the challenges we first of all encountered, one was the fear of staff. Um, staff thought that in coming in with new management, it might mean that um, some people will be deployed or some people may lose their jobs. So I first of all calm their fears that um, I believe that everyone has something to offer, so we should work together. And then second, um, I think um, because they were, I won't call them armchair tax administrators, because they were used to just staying in the office, some of them found it a bit difficult reaching out and going uh, to see taxpayers. Also in terms of the enforcement, um, I believe that when you're running a revenue agency, especially in tax, there has to be consequences. So for those uh, taxpayers who are not compliant and after discussions refuse to be compliant, then we had to embark on enforcement. So um, that was one of the first things we started in about six months into uh, my assumption of office. We've started active enforcement for those who have ability to pay and for whatever reason, did not want to pay. So that was another new phase of uh, FIRS, where the people could know that we can also bite, just apart from barking. Well, we have access to all the corporate names. This is a Corporate Affairs Commission. We just simply match them with those who are paying taxes on our records. And uh, simple as that, we know those who are paying and those who are not. Now, there might be some other small businesses that are not registered with CAC, for example. So what we did is that we exchanged um, tax data information with all the states. We gave all the states internal revenue services information on all the taxpayers that we have, and they gave us information on all the taxpayers they have. And so we were able to add quite a number of those who um, avoided registration and we're able to follow up on those numbers. And then the FITS um, department also goes checks and follows up with those who may not have registered for whatever reason, but are doing business, and tell them to register, get a tax um, ID number, and have them start paying their taxes. Um, for Nigeria, I think we're in a very good position. We've got the position, the, we're in the position for the potential, and we've got, we're in the position for the awareness, which we both have, so with that in line and that being put in place, we're well poised to get to the next level with our counterparts in other countries. Um, there's awareness, there's acceptance. We're driving the initiatives, we're carrying everyone along. We're aligning with sister agencies in order for collaboration. And with that, which is, hasn't been done in the past, this is what is going to drive the, like I said, the energy, the motivation and the compliance and the usage of these innovations that we're driving towards our taxpayers. When you fail to pay on time, the law permits the, the revenue authority to charge you penalty and also an interest on that. And for as long as those um, liability remains unpaid, uh, in some cases it's a criminal offense by the way, and where it is not paid, the law empowers the relevant authority also to distrain the goods and the assets of the company. And the tax laws provide for a couple of them we have the placing of a lien, which we call substitution on a company's account. By that, we engage with the banks and we place a lien on the company's account. Or we appoint a third party 
outside the banks, anybody who has the taxpayer's money in his custody, we actually request that person, appoint that person as an agent, and then request the person to use that money to liquidate the taxpayer's debt and also volunteer information if he has any funds, any assets of the taxpayers in his custody. In which case, the, the authority can take over the asset of the company, they can seal up the company premises. Those for me are severe, but also one can go to jail for evading taxes. And then also we have the um, OHEF who has powers to um, deduct from the budgetary allocation of a ministry or agency and all unremitted taxes and then remit that to the FIRS within 30 days. Then we also have litigation, civil litigation. The legal department goes to court and ensures the tax that is paid. We have criminal prosecution. Uh, all the officers, principal officers of a company are prosecuted for the crimes of a company because it's an offense not to pay uh, due taxes. We need to go a bit more. We have enough on our books. Um, if you don't pay your taxes or you are late in paying your taxes, there are penalties, there are interest charges that you pay. One thing I've noticed is that in Nigeria, nobody has actually been prosecuted for not paying taxes. Until we have that situation, which is already in our books, so we really have enough time. But the courage for the tax administration to actually prosecute probably an individual or a company and when we know that somebody got jail for not paying his taxes, I'm certain that everybody will sit up. If the people are convicted, they, are, um, they end some, some three years um, jail sentence and then um, the fine that goes along with it because the tax must be paid. And then when you also cause bodily injury to tax administrator also, one can also go into jail. So we have sufficient penalty, if you ask me, or deterrent for tax evaders in our books. And then also we have the sealing of a company's premises. And then if um, a company is unable to liquidate its tax debt, and after several appeals by way of demand letter written to a company, the FIRS seals the company's premises until it makes good its debt. And then uh, we have the distrains by which we, say, we sell the taxpayer's good, goods and assets. We keep such goods and assets with, it, with us for 14 days. Thereafter, if the taxpayer is unable to come forward to liquidate his debt, such goods and assets are sold and uh, the cost of the distraint, of course, is paid. Then the tax due is also paid. Thereafter, the taxpayer has um, one year, if there is any balance, to come forward and uh, um, take such monies. The sanctions that I believe are most significant is the impact it has on society. Um, I have spoken and I give a lecture uh, presentation in Ghana and we're talking about tax compliance and one simple example is that Nigeria has one of the highest rates of infant mortality when it comes to malaria and the question to ask is that what does it cost to treat an infant who is suffering from malaria is less than 5,000 naira. so each time you don't pay your taxes and you withhold the ability of government in terms of revenue then that action indirectly causes loss of life. It causes um, the business environment not to choose your location um, to set up. It causes people who want to come to spend time as tourists not to choose you because the, it's only government that can provide all that required infrastructure for a country or a state to make that the choice destination. The executive chairman, the present executive chairman of FIRS, Mr. Babatunde Fowler, has been keen on deploying these powers to 
compel compliance. And we found out that there is an increase in voluntary compliance and more people are, are brought into the tax net. So the powers are effective. They are very, pretty much effective, I would say. I rate the chairman very highly. He's very, very well equipped and experienced for the role in which he, he holds. Uh, the relationship we have is a very good professional relationship. I look to him for a lot of advice because he's got a lot of wisdom in the Institute of Taxation and as well as with the changes, he drives it with such ease of innovation and uh, he's such a very good visionary. The executive chairman is quite keen and has um, this campaign going on of know your customers. So they... As you empower government, government will also make your business or your area more conducive for business and provide you all the services that you and I require. So thank you, and from time to time we may give you some free information to give out to taxpayers. Thank you very much. God bless. And I think to be a good leader, having a good vision that people can identify in and key into is, uh, is very, very important. And he's done that so graciously and gracefully. And um, with that, you can see that wherever he's, he's been engaged with or he has participated in, there's a lot of success associated with that. And that's because of his drive and his, his uh, continued energy and tenacity. He's very, very energetic on the job and he drives that motivation throughout the whole of FIRS. Since his appointment, he's come up with quite a number of um, innovation. We start with the people and then the process and then technology. In terms of the people, he tried to reorientate the people so that they could be more committed to the service of their fatherland. Okay, so who is in charge? Ah, your, your guy at the top. So we just come to visit to ask for your help to make sure that all your customers pay VAT and remit. And at the same time, for some of our staff and well-wishers who don't know of your shop, they'll come back, if not today, tomorrow. He has also brought in a lot of innovation into tax administration. Um, he is embracing technology a lot. He knows there's a way to go. And he's having a lot of innovative ideas coming on in terms of ability to collect taxes via technology. He's done very, very well in my own estimation. He's brought in new innovation and the enforcement um, unit was made a directorate under him. He's restructured FIRS and in fact, this is the new FIRS. I believe that when you treat all staff fairly and uh, you give them what is due, you empower them to perform better. Um, I, I think it's an, a way that you have to um, provide the required resources for staff and then it's then time for them to do what is expected. I think just being fair. And um, everybody is quite happy. He's He's brought up staff morale and um, he's quite also keen that in all this we do not infract on uh, taxpayers' rights because he believes that taxpayers are stakeholders in, in, in our job. And I find him a worthy boss and a worthy leader as well. He's indeed a very good person to look forward to when it comes to my career progressions. To tax evaders, um, you should look beyond yourself. Realize that your non-payment of taxes is affecting somebody, somebody who may be close to you. And what we're looking for is just a token, just a little bit of your profit. So um, join the family, contribute to the Commonwealth. So next time you decide on where you want to spend your holiday, you choose home. I want to say a special thank you to the executive chairman, Mr. Tunde Fowler and his team for educating Nigerians on how the taxation system works in Nigeria. I hope you enjoyed this special edition. Um, I'll be here again, same time next week. Bye-bye.